I'm Tom Bixby with Level Management Partners, and this is another installment of the Level Expert Network interview series. Today I'm visiting with Jeff Tobe, Managing Partner with Customer Experience Systems and a member of our Level Expert Network. A key focus of Level Management Partners is to help clients grow the value of their business, and we do this with the help of experts just like Jeff. So I'll be talking with Jeff about how his work contributes to growing business value. I hope you enjoy. Jeff, thanks for spending a few minutes with me today. So could you just take a moment or two to share a little bit about you and customer experience systems? For sure, Tom. Thanks for having me. Um, as you know, I've worked with companies in over 50 countries worldwide on making the leap from customer service to customer experience. And I think there's a huge difference. Uh, we developed a, a niche uh, with a system we developed for small rural hospitals who get reimbursed by Medicare and Medicaid, partially by their patient experience scores. And then I, I realized that same system with quite a few modifications <laughs> would work with, with any organization in any industry to do basically three things. First, to make them the employer of choice, you know, attaining and retaining great talent. Uh, so important right now in today's economy. Uh, second, to, to help make them the vendor of choice in their niche. In other words, develop customer loyalty. And third, and probably most important, to increase profits. So at CES, we take organizations through a one-year customer experience initiative to do all three. That's great. Thanks. Uh, so as you know, I think it's very common for us to be working with a client who we sense has a very short-term focus for their business. And we work with them to think about their business as a long-term investment focusing on growing the value of their company. So how does your work in customer experience influence business value? Oh, that's a huge question. You know, executives that I work with are, are so quick to see the end game benefits of a customer centric strategy. I mean, more satisfied customers, uh, increased loyalty, a, a lower cost to serve, and I think most important, more engaged employees. But they often fail to, to understand clearly what a, a superior customer experience is worth and exactly how to generate value. Most executives associate customer service with customer experience. And, Customer service is only part of the end-to-end -end customer experience. Um, companies launch disruptive initiatives to delight customers with bold moves and innovations. I see it all the time, but they often fail to, to quantify the economic outcomes or differences in customer experiences. So their efforts end up having clear costs and unclear near-term results. And I think that if companies can build a clear link between the customer experience and value, it requires discipline to invest early in some kind of analytic approach. You have to measure it. I mean, it's that simple. It, it's easy to skip this step for the sake of speed, but that's a mistake I see all the time. Yeah, that, that sounds great. So but let's dig into this just a little bit more. So talk about analytics. So what kind of analytics are used to quantify the economic outcomes of customer experience? Yeah, great question. Um, I think there's a, a bunch of steps. That's, I think five if I do this, if I can remember. But first of all, I think that we have to develop a hypothesis about customer outcomes that matter. So we start by identifying the specific customer behavior and outcomes that add value in your specific industry. That can be done through a, a customer experience journey map. It can be done just by you know, doing some research in the industry. Uh, the second, I think, is, is we have to link what customers say to what they do. And, and there's typically a difference, as you know. You know, link what customers say in satisfaction surveys with their behavior over time doesn't match. Um, are they different and why are they different? Uh, number three would be to sort of analyze the historical performance of real customer data groups uh, using customer data linked to survey respondents. Uh, analyze customers to you designate as satisfied. You know, uh, what does that mean in your business? Are they satisfied? Are they neutral? or even dissatisfied over a period, it takes time of one to two years. Um, I think number four would be kind of look at the trend in the industry to take a forward looking view. I like to say, look through your, your windshield to see what's coming down the road ahead of you in your industry, instead of relying on your rear view mirrors to see how it's always been done before. Um, but what, what we find is successful customer experience programs look forward, not backward, and kind of assessing the link to value. And, Finally, and it just makes sense, we have to track outcomes uh, through tangible KPIs um, that 
everyone in the organization can kind of cheer for. That's the way I approach it. In my experience, the best approach to quantify the value of the customer experience is to track outcomes over time for each customer segment that matters, but most importantly, that applies to everyone in the organization. So very quickly, what am I talking about? Yes, one uh, KPI would be sales, but does that really um, affect the receptionist? You know, does she really care except that it means job security if we have more sales? But really, uh, we look for things for KPIs that everyone uh, can kind of get behind. So let's let's think about a company that lacks a superior customer experience. So are there any? <laughs> <laughs> so so how would that how would that kind of company uh, and how would that lack of a superior customer experience reflect in the value of their business? Ah. Well, I think if a, if a business can define the economic outcome of, of varying customer experiences, um, this would commonly be expressed in terms of increased customer spending due to you know, greater customer loyalty. Uh, again, in my experience, uh, 30 years or more, I hate to say how old I am, <laughs> companies who I've worked with uh, to improve uh, CX have generated increased sales of up to 7%, 8% after completing their CX initiatives. Um, in addition to that, you know, the increased customer loyalty produced by superior customer experience and the discipline of perpetual monitoring of CX and related KPIs will sustain a competitive advantage in the marketplace and, and really just enhance prospects or future earnings of the business. So, Jeff, it's really easy to see, in my view, how business owners would want to get your help in assessing and improving customer experience. So let's talk about how this plugs into the value growth architecture program at level. Yeah, I, I think it plugs in well. We've talked about this before. Um, you know, as part of the discovery phase of value growth architecture programs, uh, we would understand the degree to which the company truly understands, monitors, and, and manages customer experience. Um, we conduct surveys of existing customers, and we collect and, and sort of begin to analyze the current state of customer experience within the company. Then we take a look at uh, customer experience within the industry or profession as well. And all of that information allows us to propose specific actions to improve customer experience discipline and outcomes and generate the, the enterprise value growth I described earlier. Um, the beauty of the value growth architecture model, as far as I can see, is, is how it quantifies the value ROI of these kinds of programs, making it easier for CEOs to make investments to grow the value of their business. And one of those investments right now, according to every survey I've read, should be in customer experience. Absolutely. Jeff, thanks so much for spending a few minutes with us today. And thank you also for being an important part of the Level Expert Network. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us today on our Level Expert Network interview series. I'll share contact information for today's guest at the end of this video. There are plenty more great interviews to come, so I hope you'll click the button to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the little bell icon to be notified when new content is available for you. See you next time.